Well, this is a, a recap highlight style video I'm going to do about the last week of developing Songbringer. This is the game Songbringer. Um, it's a Zelda-like game that's procedurally generated based on six letters you give it when you start your adventure. So, um, yeah, I'm going to recap what's been done this week. Um, I'm going to start off with showing some of the cool items. Actually, this is going to be more like two weeks worth of highlights. This is the first highlights video I've ever done. So I want to keep this to around five minutes and just show you some of the, the, the stuff that's been done real quickly. So... Um, the first here thing here is the ghost sword. So this ghost sword shoots a, this like ghost-like sword out of your when you swing your sword regularly. So that's what the ghost sword is. It's an item you're gonna find somewhere in the world, right? You find this ghost sword. It's this awesome thing that gives you this power to shoot these projectiles out of your sword, basically. Now the, there's item crafting in this game, and if you craft the ghost sword with um, fire, for example, you get the fire ghost sword or the fire sword or whatever you want to call it. Um, and the fire sword is pretty cool because it creates a fire entity wherever you hit an enemy. So if I hit an enemy, there I hit one over there, it creates fire there and you can also be hurt by your own fire. So you got to kind of watch out. It's not something you can just use all the time. And the way the ghost swords work, you can see now I don't I don't have the power to use the ghost sword because my health is low. I'm at, I'm at half health right now. So when you get down to half health, you can't use your ghost sword anymore. Um, and that's by design because it's it's sort of an homage to Zelda One in the sense where in Zelda One you had the power to use the mat your sword and shoot those projectiles out of your sword, but only when you're at full health. And that always kind of annoyed me. Because, uh, you know, it sucked whenever you were just lost that one bit of health, you know? And you couldn't use your sword anymore in that way. So I like this this so that the sword actually gets shorter and shorter. So yeah, as, I'm, as I've lost a little bit of health, it didn't go as far. So that's how these ghost swords work. That was the fire sword. Let's show off the ice sword. The ice sword freezes enemies. Sort of like Metroid, the ice beam. You can actually freeze enemies in place. And um, I think I may do sort of like a crystallis like thing where you can use the ice sword to um, to like freeze bridges of um, like water. Like there will be certain areas of water where you can um, where you can use your ice sword and it will freeze it and create sort of like a land bridge that you can quick, you can walk over for a moment. Uh, so that's the ice sword. And all these swords I'm going to improve as well, the art. I think I've got some another level of art I can improve all these and make them even better. Especially the fire sword. That thing I want to be like a sweet flaming fireball. Um, so here's the lightning sword. The lightning sword like strikes the ground right where it hits the enemy with lightning. And then it also strikes another area randomly. So there's a chance that you can even get hit by your own lightning. Um, and that also is, you know, I've, I've always wanted things to not be quite too powerful. So when things kind of get to be powerful, maybe they have the downside. And that's why you can be hurt by your own fire and your own lightning because they're just, you know, really powerful items. So that's the lightning sword. Um, and then the last ghost sword is the fear sword. The fear sword is kind of cool because it works opposite of the ghost sword. So when you have the fear sword... It's also going to be a little bit stronger, so the Fear Sword is going to do a little bit more damage. But see, at full health, I can't even use the Fear Sword because it works exactly the opposite of the Ghost Sword. So as I lose a little bit of health, there now I have a, a slightly weak Fear Sword. And I lose a little more health, and I get a stronger Fear Sword. So this Fear Sword gets stronger as you get weaker. And as you get down to all, all the way down to like one one bit of health left, the thing is at maximum power and it shoots a long distance. So that's what the Fear Sword is. Um, and once again, this is another one that needs better graphics. So um, that's, that's what I got done about two weeks ago. Now on to what I started doing this last week was working more on the overworld generator. So once again, you enter those six letters when you start a game. And it generates an entire world based on those six letters. So I'm going to show you the same six letters, but in 
I want to show you different ways that it generates, can generate the world based on those six letters. So um, you can see this first screenshot I'm showing you is the overworld generator showing its output. And the grayish brownish areas are mountains. The pink area at the bottom middle is the home screen. The green, the lighter green areas are sort of like a forest. The darker green areas are like a dark forest, sort of like a a cemetery almost, or dark jungle. And then the yellow areas are uh, desert, or sand. And then the blue little things in the middle are lakes. The blue on the edge is the sea, and the blue things in there stretching out are rivers. So you can see that it generates the entire overworld. It kind of pivots the entire thing based on the mountain's position. So it, the first thing it does when it generates the world is generate a mountain position. And then it generates everything off that. It pivots everything. So you can see this is with the mountain at the top left. Now if I go down one screenshot, this, it's shifted the mountains a little bit to the right. So this about the middle of the mountains is about four screens in. The next one down, we've got the mountains all the way in the middle. Everything has been pivoted based on that. The next one here, this was the mountains slightly to the right. So yeah, I'm very proud. I'm so excited to have this world generator working in such an interesting fashion now. Um, and you can see it also generates the maze off of all of that too. All the white lines are the maze that it generates. Um, that these are pathways that you can walk along on the overworld. So very, very interesting to play now. So this is, this is cool. This took a few days of development, lots of code to get this all working. Uh, and so then the next thing I, I got done, uh, this last week was to work on different areas of the overworld, different styles. So just like in this, this, these examples of here, um, the darker forest has a different style. The, the lighter green forest is a different style. The mountains have a different style. Even the lake has a cool style. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on what's, what I use to debug the game a lot. I call this God Mode. Uh, and in God Mode, I can run really fast and run through walls. So this will allow me to show you the overworld really quickly and what it, the new styles that have been generated. So um, this is God Mode. Um, I can stand on water, I can walk, walk through walls, I can walk really, really fast. So, um, yeah, so here's sort of the lighter forest. Here's one of the darker forest areas. The darker forest is kind of mysterious and um, it's really, really cool. I can't wait to put some fun stuff in the, this, the darker forest areas. Here's um, Here's the sandy area. And if I go further north, I'm getting into sort of the mountains area. And we'll go over and I'll show you some of the, um, yeah, here's some, some of the lake, er, lake areas. So here's a bridge going across this lake into this, re, this health refill right here. So this has really made the world more interesting. It just, it makes the world feel like you want to explore it. Like what is that? What what are these things? And I can't wait to go and place the secrets and do just really fun stuff to make this world more and more and more interesting. So the last thing I got done um, this week, it took a few days, but was to create cliffs. So the cliff faces are areas right now where you can walk north into an area which is supposed to be on top of a cliff, right? So you get the feeling that there's more height, more depth in the world as, because you're walking upstairs and you're going into, you're finding something, you're discovering something. And I drew these gargoyles and this rock face and made it all work. What's cool about these is it because it's a procedurally generated game, these um, on this screen right here, these stairs are three tiles wide. Um, but these these stairs can actually be up to nine tiles wide or down all the way to only one tile wide, depending on how the procedural algorithms create this area. So it's a flexible out. That's why it took so many days just to get this one little thing done because I had to get it to work flexibly with all the procedural algorithms and stuff like that. So really excited about that. Um, and what was the last thing? Oh, I also got grass working too. So grass is like you can stand on the... You can, um, there's all these little grass splotches. Oh, and also I got procedurally generated textures for the ground. So you can see there's 
the ground now has sort of these interesting patterns, right? Like here's a good example. Um, and the player, if you notice, the player actually watch is supposed to walk. I'm not sure if he is right now, but he's supposed to walk down a little bit as he goes into these little indentations. And then, yeah, and here's the grass. So this, this coming week, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to be doing. But one thing I want to do is make it so you can interact more with the grass. Like you'll be, you can walk over the grass and that will, um, that will flatten it temporarily. Um, I want to make it so there's waterfalls too. I've already got the waterfalls placed in the world. I just need to actually implement the waterfalls. Um, so yeah, that's what I'll start off with this next week. So yeah, that's it for this highlight video. This is, um, uh, yeah, I'll try and do more of these highlight videos, these little recaps of what have been, what's been done so that it's, you don't have to soak up two hours a, a day worth of videos. You can just get this one five, ten minute video and see what's kind of been done in the last week. So that's it for this first highlight video. Cheers, everybody.